Good afternoon. My name is Des Fitzgerald. The uh, demo, live demo, uh, from uh, the south of uh, the Northern Territory in Australia of the Amadeus Basin, where we have some variable gravity data. Uh, and I'm going to show you how, uh, how to get an optimum gridded representation of the field. So let's begin. So now we start on a demonstration, uh, and the practical demonstration is to do with uh, taking the Amadeus, uh, we're going to highlight the Amadeus Basin uh, data. We're going to extract it from a Northern Territory Gravity uh, Principal Facts Database. So the Northern Territory uh, Principal Facts Database, you can see it there labelled ntgrav.dir, and we're just exercising the <coughs> project manager looking at the thumbnail, you can make out the Northern Territory and the, we're now going to fire off the uh, 3D Explore tool to continue just exploring uh, what the data looks like and that comes up by default uh, with the fields across the top the, uh, the row, the group, the bougay, the free air the original observed gravity field and just simply a Latin along uh, and so at this stage the data is in um, lat long uh, projections and uh, yes yeah, so they're um, just expanding the the view and you can see across the top the uh, longitude we're zooming in and seeing the, the very variable nature of the uh, sampling of the gravity field in the northern territory and that's the, that's the purpose of this demonstration try and optimize the frequency content despite the uh, the variable data sampling. Uh, the mouse is coming down from the uh, uh, towards the bottom of the Northern Territory uh, where the Amadeus Basin is uh, down here uh, and that's the area we're going to uh, subsection out and uh, and uh, zoom in on. So that's the end of the, the quick uh, preview of the, the data. There are the fields uh, uh, and you can see they're all three byte real except for the Latin longs which have to be you need the double precision to get the sufficient resolution. Now we fire up the, the gridding tool and you see the same uh, <coughs> uh, image we saw before as the preview Instead of using uh, observed gravity, we're going to uh, do the, the bougay corrected. So that'll be slab corrected bougay, it's not terrain corrected, just the simple bougay correction. And the first thing we're going to do is um, uh, choose to increase the extrapolation uh, in cells uh, but from 5 to 10, and when a cell uh, when an observation arrives at the uh, uh, the minimum um, in, in, a, in a cell we're going to take the point that's been observed that's closest to the centroid of the cell as the observation that we're going to honour and it's what we call an original data point. The variable uh, gridding methods we're going to use the variable density method it's variable data density which is perfect for this type of thing and it's a multi-grid method so you have uh, reduction factors from one grid to the the next so you so we're picking out um, uh, say from five to one uh, and then for the the coarser grids the original grid that we're uh, going to start with to get the long wavelength the historic data we'll uh, uh, smooth we'll, we'll do 20 iterations of minimum curvature on that and uh, at the uh, longer wavelengths and we won't weight any s sample uh, any uh, differently to any other so just use unity weight types so the first uh, grid will be uh, have five times the cell size as the final grid now moving on to the grid refinement stage uh, uh, you do a small amount of initial uh, smoothing that's what the Laplace operator is you don't need to do very much of that and that, the reason for having that there is just to make it go a bit faster when it comes to a, in, uh, enforce the uh, <coughs> the minimum curvature. And uh, there are there are uh, uh, three uh, kernel sizes in minimum curvature. Uh, I actually like the 49 one, but today we're going to use the 25. 
um, we're not going to have a maximum uh, residual we're prepared to leave in the data we'll just let it uh, run for the seven iterations and traditional uh, relaxation factor is an over relaxation uh, for the gauss seidel solver for the minimum curvature and it's always uh, it's been f shown by historic practice that 1.375 is a good one now you can honour the original cell uh, data to the nearest cell or the nearest two cells as I've shown in the previous uh, uh, thing and then when it's finished uh, doing the minimum curvature we can relax the honouring to uh, enforce the minimum curvature kernel uh, just a little at the end to take off any hot spots. We want to fill any internal holes and we're going to extrapolate to the limits of the data. We now move to the output panel. We're going to we're set, here setting up the uh, the name of the grid that we wish to produce, and we're just uh, <coughs> calling it uh, Bougay M. The product name is Bougay, so it just inherits the field name as the default. The null value will be minus 999 by default. The, the precision will be inherit from the input field, so it'll be four byte real and we're setting now the ultimate cell size which is quite a fine cell size it's down to 0 0.002 of a degree which is approximately 220 meters you can see that on the side there so it's quite a big cell uh, size uh, by default if it was the whole of the northern territory 5000 by 8000 cell size but now we're going to limit the uh, region uh, by just uh, typing in uh, you know a, an origin point which is right down there you can see it's moved right down and then we're going to take the extents uh, uh, in degrees and limit it to uh, we limit ourselves to a grid which is 1400 columns and 1200 rows at 220 meters and we've uh, set our origin points on the top left hand corner uh, then you get the uh, we've hit the apply button and automatically so the first thing we do is create the uh, <coughs> the coarse grid and then uh, as the first pass and we smooth that uh, pretty strongly uh, uh, to get the long wavelength where the where the data sampling is um, uh, inadequate for, to support the high frequency 220 meter uh, grid that we want and when there's uh, plenty of uh, observations of the gravity point as point data uh, we get the uh, uh, we cut it out and allow the grid the second pass to honor the higher frequency so there it is already it's quite quick and we have our first uh, uh, version of the uh, the data and there's the grid and in the thumbnail immediately shows up uh, in the project manager in the thumbnail and we can go straight to 3d explore and try and enhance the uh, uh, the grid and uh, just do a bit of uh, data enhancements. We're going to do the color stretching. So you open up the uh, <coughs> right hand bar, the toolbar there, and we've turned on uh, the uh, user signal for the z-axis, and we're going to rotate that in 3D. So you get a, a visual effect uh, using the uh, the gridded bougay as a relief. Um, so it's uh, it's only a hundred or so milligals but uh, it's scaled that is it gets, can be a useful way to uh, to show you the uh, the the, uh, <coughs> the variation of the gravity field so there's a uh, job file here of course that uh, also does exactly the same job so with what you did interactively is also available uh, uh, and there are all the options that we chose and you can see them uh, there you can see the cell size the field name the number of iterations, the fact that we're using the lat and the long and the field from the database and we can run the same job uh, interactively uh, but as using a task file rather than running the GUI and there it is uh, running and the, instead of the, the the grid being called the Northern Territory Grav Bougay it's now called the West Amadeus Bougay grid it's exactly the same size and you can see the progress bar happening in the top right hand corner and the job is finished you get a pop-up to say that the interactive job is finished and now we'll have a look at that one as well it should be identical to the one we did interactively and we're looking at the histogram of the bougay and you can see it's uh, ranging from um, 
uh, up to uh, 300 uh, milligals and uh, uh, and the sa you get the same histogram with the second grid yep fine and they're just switching between the two thumbnails you see it's the same product so one was done interactively one was done and we're using the older visualization tool now and one of the reasons for picking that up is it uh, also does a, automatically a uh, the wet look and also the uh, the gradient drape is the range of the data uh, being shown there histogram equalizing it and and this is a, a much tougher well, once we go to the the drape it's a much tougher way of looking at the data uh, to see what the bus were so this is uh, this has been recorded and uh, that that ends the demo thank you very much